Hello, everyone. Dr. Vicki here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center. It's time to tarot scopes again. We'll be doing the tarot scopes for the sign of Capricorn, Capricorn sun, moon, rising um, for the month of February 2024. Now, of course, we've just moved out of January and uh, Pluto, the planet of transformation, has moved out of your sign yet again. Um, and is now in the sign of Aquarius. So there's a feeling of maybe relief. <laughs> it's been very intense. Um, these last degrees of Capricorn have been extraordinarily challenging for most folks, uh, and I imagine for Capricorns as well. But uh, this month is one in which we are ready to move forward, all the planets are direct. The last uh, holdout planet that was moving backwards was Uranus, the planet of change. <laughs> and now it's moving forward. So we can imagine. And of course, Uranus is one of the ruling planets of the sign of um, Aquarius, uh, which we have, you know, half the month in Aquarius, a little more than half the month in Aquarius and the rest in Pisces. So those two energies, Aquarius, Pisces, right? Uh, the last two of the uh, signs of the Zodiac, as you sort of sit there and say, I did my part, I did my part. All right, so let's take a look and see what is uh, cooking, so to speak, for Capricorn. Um, just technology man you think at this point i'd be really good at it because kind of always doing it but i don't know if i don't know how to learn what's going on i tell you yes i know i am okay it's telling me something i already knew all right let me just find you cappy corn here we go very good um, all right, so we're looking at your sign Capricorn. Of course, we know that Capricorn is an earth sign, and we probably also know that it's a, a cardinal earth sign. Cardinal signs are the season starting signs here in the northern hemisphere, of course. Capricorn starts the season of winter, but if you're lucky enough to live down under, uh, it is the uh, the sign of summer and the rising sun, right? Oh, well, actually, the sun is at its height, right? And the sun is at its lowest point here in the Northern Hemisphere when the sun moves into Capricorn. And as I said, you've been um, going through quite a lot of change, a lot of growth, some of it painful, some of it, uh, wow, wow, that took a long time. I'm glad that's over kind of thing. Um, you know, with open arms, you know, taking the change. Yep, change is good. Um, and it, we can't say that it's completely over. But um, I think that you have, uh, you know, done a really, really bang up job, Capricorn. And uh, we want to thank you from all the rest of the zodiac signs here. Um, your mantras I utilize and your ruling planet, of course, is the Lord of Karma himself, Saturn. Saturn. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, here we go. All right. So this just happens to be the year for, uh, for Capricorn. And, uh, we can see that, um, this, the moon, I mean, uh, Mars, Ma Mars runs almost through the entire, uh, Zodiac, but not quite. It's, it peters out when it gets to. Leo and it goes retrograde um, in December, I think December 6th, actually. Um, but your ruling planet is Saturn, so we're a little bit more interested. You no, know, we're interested in everything, right? But we're a little more interested in Saturn. And Saturn is now moving direct. Um, and it will move, I believe, up to 20, 19 or 20 this year before it retrogrades back. I could be wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure it's up to 20. Um, and so uh, 
it's, you know, continues to move through the sign of dissolution, you know, in a way, um, Pluto through Capricorn is, is somewhat of a, um, a lot of like crumbling structures, creating a lot of dust, a lot of old stuff sort of being swept away. Um, and with the ruler of Capricorn in Pisces now, there's this sense of a uh, 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 flooding or a washing away or uh, the, the sort of the water coming um, <clears throat> to uh, clean things up maybe, but then that dirties the water. So you have to make sure that you're taking care of your emotional body as well, Capricorn. With Pluto being in your sign for so many years, you know now that it pays to share your feelings and feel your feelings and not just shove them down and repress them because when they blow, they blow big. And uh, there's a better way. There's a better way to integrate uh, the energy of your opposite sign, Cancer, which while Pluto was going through Capricorn, its polarity point, the direction of Pluto itself evolution was in the song was in the direction of cancer and in pluto actually pluto also has a north node and a south node and the north node is in cancer even pluto itself is moving in the direction of cancer so these last 20 uh, uh 15 years i think has it been um since pluto's been in capricorn um have been um, earth changing in a lot of ways and hopefully in the best of ways, hopefully in the best of ways. Um, okay, so let's continue. Let's look at February. So um, you can see here that just from this particular uh, diagram, Capcorn, there's a lot of energy in the first quarter of your chart here, the first, second, and third house, that's what's highlighted uh, right now. And so um, this is a time of uh, that's more sort of inwardly oriented for you, Capricorn, and also a time of um, searching for the self, searching for who you are, what's important to you, and what's around you, like becoming aware of, of your immediate environment, right? That's what this month is as far as energetically in your chart. So you may not be somebody who's going to be out there a lot or even, I mean, you might have to be out there because people do have to go to work, but, um, you know, sometimes you're a little bit more excited about that than other times. And maybe if you have an opportunity to do some work behind the scenes, instead of being the front person all the time, you may, you may do that. Um, but I did do a, uh, an oracle pull, um, the crystal ally cards. I pulled the crystal ally cards and that card that came up for you was leadership. So, <laughs> but it is a balance because the rune I picked is quite a bit opposite that. So there's a balance here this month between, right, really putting yourself out there and um, then um, wanting to, um, not really be, you know, more involved in, in figuring yourself out. And I think the balance between that with a little bit more time for figuring yourself out is probably the best way to spend your time this month. The first uh, major aspect is Mercury making a sextile to Neptune. This is a communicative uh, aspect. It is a waning sextile, so it's at the end of its synodic cycle, Mercury and Neptune. Mercury and Neptune is the voice of spirit. And, like, how do you uh, take it in? Well, spirit has a lot to say as we start February. In fact, this is the 2 2024 portal. This is the 2 2 portal, and we have the spirit speaking to us. So uh, it should be a good portal reading when, when time comes, and I do it um, but uh, yeah, a lot of information from spirit coming in right from the get go uh, in the in February. Uh, actually, it's probably hasn't stopped for quite a while. But 
definitely uh, with some solutions to humanitarian energy, some compassion, some progressivism, definitely, definitely at the beginning of February. What would we expect? Pluto's in Aquarius, right? Isn't that what's supposed to happen? <laughs> uh, week two, the 5th, February, um, Mercury ingresses into Aquarius. So all the personal planets, it began with the sun. The sun actually ingressed into Aquarius and then Pluto ingressed into Aquarius. Now the rest of the, per so that's who you are. So you walked in <laughs> to Aquarius and then Pluto came right behind you, right? Now Mercury is how we think. And Mercury moves into Aquarius and there's Pluto. The dweller on the threshold, as it's called. And every planet that moves into Aquarius will have the dweller on the threshold there. Um, Mercury conjunct Pluto is deep probing, deep thinking, right? Um, at the first degree of Aquarius, that degree uh, was the same degree that Saturn and Jupiter conjoined at um, back in 2020, December 21st of 2020. Powerful day, another sun moving into a cardinal sign of Capricorn on that day. A uh, world point, so things real, it was a real shift. Um, and then later uh, when we look here, we're going to see that Mars and, and uh, Venus can join this, this month. That happens every two years. Well, two years ago, Venus and um, Mars conjoined twice, uh, once in Capricorn and once in zero, zero degrees, zero, one minute of Aquarius, um, Venus and Mars. So they, by one minute, they were in Aquarius and they um, they got they now two years later are coming back around again. And so there was that little hint of Aquarius in the way that we relate to each other because Venus and Mars deals with how we relate to each other. All right. On the seventh, Venus makes a trine to Uranus. It's a trine of social rewards, flowing energy, understanding, learning, teaching. Uh, Venus is what is important to us, and Uranus is new things. Could be also be astrology. Um, you know, in fact, that's funny because I am starting an astrology class a beginner's astrology class that week. Wow, did I pick the right day for that? <laughs> I'm so good. Um, Mars also on that day makes a sextile to Neptune. Sextiles are mentally stimulating. It's moving in a progressive direction. Humanitarian stuff. Mars is action. In Capricorn, which it really likes being in, Mars is very happy in Capricorn. And it's very, very... Um, productive and it gets things done in Capricorn um so this is the nice sextile with Neptune which is idealism and you know the the dream but this is an opportunity for a dream to come true if you work it if you take the actions and you act responsibly it'll happen for you on the eighth the sun makes a last quarter square to Uranus this is part of the sun uranus cycle illuminating um illuminating illumination this it's this is the lights are on guys look around and see what you see that's that is the energy of this uh as of this combination of planets um the sun rules leo and uranus lose it rules aquarius and of course that Leo Aquarius axis is going to be active for 20 years because if Pluto is moving through uh, Aquarius, the polarity point of Pluto is going to be in Leo. And so there is that 
tension and that necessary movement towards loving yourself <laughs> through this period. It's going to make a big difference for everybody. The, the faster you can learn to love yourself, the more successful you're going to be. Not just like I'm the best thing since sliced bread and I'm, the, you know, out of fear, but true, like it can't come from fear. Like you think about the ex-president who you say, oh, he loves himself. He, no, he's afraid. He's afraid. It's just fear. There's where there's fear, there's no love. And so it's really about coming to love yourself because you are a reflection to everybody you love. And you are a reflection of the Godhead, the God goddess, all that is head, the divinity. We have it. We are divine. We are divine. Uh, we just need to uncover it. <laughs> and really, that's what the sun in Uranus helps us to do. Last quarter, square crisis in consciousness, crisis in belief, tough time tough time, a lot of guilt. Um, but really what you want to do is break free. And so this is an opportunity to break free, although not everybody would be happy about it. But, you know, hey, people just got just to gotta do what they do, right? Um, this uh, square is um, happening in your second and your Fifth house. Yes. Am I correct? Sun Uranus. Yeah. So uh, second, fifth house. Second house is your money. Fifth house is your children. There could be a little kerfuffle over some, maybe you stop supporting a child who has to learn to be responsible for themselves. Uh, that can be challenging and difficult. And uh Capricorns like to know what's going on and they like to, you know, they don't like clean. They don't necessarily want to just, you know, cut it off because they like to, they do like control. Um, but, you know, sometimes um, people need to break free, right? Um, on the, let's see, on the 7th, nope, I'm past that. On the 9th, on the 9th, we have a new moon. At 21 degrees of Aquarius. This is your second house. You can see that your second house is full. And it also has dragon in it. You see a little dragon? Because when we have the new moon in Aquarius. It means we're in a new Chinese uh, year. Right? And it's the year of the dragon. Last year the dragon was 2012. And uh, this time. It was a water dragon at that time. And now we have the wood dragon. And uh, the wood is uh, growth growth it's very powerful um and it's and it's green so we can grow resources we can and this is starting in your second house which you know the the chinese new year's always does start in your second house but pluto's there and pluto's not always there and pluto has been there for 250 years so um yeah so it's big. It's big. So so this is a time of growth. Now, 21 degrees of Aquarius, Sabian symbol, isn't the isn't the jolliest of Sabian symbols, but I'll read it to you. Okay, 21 Aquarius. A disappointed and disillusioned woman courageously faces a seemingly empty life. The capacity to meet emotionally upsetting experiences in human relationships with strength of character and personal integrity. At the emotional level, we see how a woman confronted with sharp disappointment and forced to face vanishing the cherished illusions, presumably in terms of close personal relationship, she has to learn to manage such crises, which are really tests of inner strength and perhaps compassion. We all have within ourselves the power to learn through emotional crises. But like any other facility, we need it developed. Resilience under adversity. So um, 
we get better at it. <laughs> and if you've had a lot of practice, you're probably good at it. So you probably have to, maybe you're not so worried <laughs> about that symbol, but it really is asking us to just be resilient in, in the face of, of, of difficulties. And, and I imagine it's going to be a difficult uh, year uh, on a lot of levels, but on other levels, on um, maybe the levels we can't quite see, uh, we are manifesting big. And so it sometimes it it's instant and sometimes it takes a little while, but you just need to focus on that, which you want to bring into the world, right? Um, the next day, Mercury makes a last quarter square to Jupiter. Mercury and Jupiter are the planets connected to our mind, how our mind works. Jupiter is intuition. Mercury is logic. Intuition trumps logic at this time. Okay. Intuition. Trust your intuitions. Um, and it is the last quarter square. And so on a certain level, you have to trust yourself uh, with that square and know that you're capable to move forward and, and be the authority in your own life. Um. Week three, we have Mars ingress into Aquarius. It's been in your sign, that first house. It feels good, doesn't it? Mars in your first house, like room, room, room. You're probably nice and revved up. Um, it goes into your second house, which isn't bad. That's your money house. So you'll probably be making more money now um, while Mars is in there. About six weeks. Uh, but it ingresses into Aquarius. And then the next day, Valentine's Day, why not? We have Mars conjunct Pluto, the dweller on the threshold. Now, Mars and Pluto have a special relationship, which I'll talk about. Before we I do that, I do want to mention, because Mars and Aquarius seems like a very important thing. Mars is like the masculine, right? Well, what's the feminine doing? Well, she's having a conversation with the divine. The same day as Mars ingresses into Aquarius, Venus is making a sextile to Neptune. This is communicative. It moves us in a more progressive, humanitarian, compassionate direction. Um, and Venus is money. And Neptune is our, our ideals, so the things that we believe in, this may be an opportunity where you can, you know, put some money into something that you believe in, you know. I mean, almost anybody could use a tax write-off, right, a charity, give it to a charity that you know is going to go to good, you know, something for, for the, like, um, Jen Lynn and, and, and Johnny and, um, Becca did for, uh, and then uh, all the other readers that went for, for uh, thanks, um, New Year's Eve and gave to Central Kitchen, right? That kind of thing. All right. Um, Mars conjunct Pluto important because it is a cycle in which the desires of the soul, which are unconscious, become conscious through the action of Mars. And it's in one degree of Aquarius. So we're looking at that uh, mission, uh, old Adobe mission, which um, in California, that's the symbol for one of Aquarius. You've heard it many times come out of my mouth because it seems like every other day something is making a conjunction at that um, at that place. And of course, this month we have um, we have Mercury do it. We have Mars do it, and then we have Venus do it. So that's all the personal planets, right? The only one who had, didn't have to, to face Pluto was the sun, because the sun scooted in before. So the sun didn't have to face, didn't have to uh, ask to go through the, the Pluto gateway <laughs> to get into to the sign of Aquarius. But next year, that'll be different. Next year, it'll have to go through the have to meet Pluto before it goes further into Aquarius. But, um, okay. So, um, Venus on the 16th ingresses into Aquarius. Again, this is really full second house. Venus, it likes being in the second house. 
she's the natural she's the natural ruler really of that house being the ruler of taurus and that being a taurus house um and she moves into aquarius so venus and aquarius very friendly it's very friendly uh very much into groups and uh organizing for the betterment of all a real good team player venus and aquarius a little sometimes strange taste in men or women or whatever but generally just a, a good a good citizen person. Okay. Uh, on the 17th, Venus, because everybody has to, uh, conjoins Pluto. Uh, yes, you guessed it, one degree of Aquarius. And so she needs to move past Pluto. Now, Venus and Pluto know each other pretty well. Um, and... In a way, you know, Pluto is the lord of the underworld. And, um, you know, if if in, in myth, if you if you died, if you passed, you had to go to the underworld. And um, that was his realm. And he could take a person's physical body away, right, by you entering to his realm. But he couldn't, he couldn't take the love away. So in a way, Venus... Uh, Pluto doesn't really have power over Venus because love transcends death and transcends change. But she's conjoining Pluto on the 17th. On the 18th, the sun ingresses into Pisces, moving into that third house of yours. This is a nice energy. The sun in Pisces kind of can make you your dreamy, a little dreamy on the on the mind here. Um, but um, it's going to feel, I think the Pisces time is going to feel like a little bit of a respite because then um, April comes with eclipses. And it's not that things aren't happening in, in, uh, in March, but um, there's an, actually an eclipse in March. But um, um, it's going to feel good. It's going to be a little bit of a, a break, I think. Um, on the 22nd, Venus and Mars can join. I talked about that. At seven of Aquarius, child being born out of an egg, mutations. It's really about a new life, of one of a, a new way of relating to each other by letting go of the past and uh, like starting new. Like, um, I, I think there was a there's a thing in the Bible where after a certain amount of time you get so much debt and then all the debt gets wiped away. It's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. Um, February 23rd, Mercury follows the sun and goes into the great cosmic sea of Pisces. Uh, and then now you're really, you could be confused actually, but uh, you're really sort of like um, floating um, on your back on on the inner tube along the, the great cosmic sea it's a great time for meditation it's a great time to um connect to rest to recuperate uh and you know i think february is a lot of people go on vacation in february a lot of people used to go down to florida i don't know if people still do that i guess they probably do um but, you know, that is, it is a good time to rest anyway for you, especially Capricorn. February 24th, we have the full moon in Virgo. This is happening in your ninth house. Here's the full moon up here in your ninth house. Um, you have the sun here, of course. It's always opposite the moon in the third house. So this is, a, um, this is the axis and this is the axis of the mind. And um, it is an opportunity to become aware of something um, that's that's happening in your life. Um, 
something may come to light and the full moon is in the in the in the house associated with truth and justice so there can be some justice that comes along uh with this energy and some truth uh week five we have mars making a last quarter square to jupiter this is one of those crises in consciousness feel a little guilty squares mars and jupiter have a tendency to overdo it when they get together uh too much anger too much ambition too much arrogance too much optimism too much too much too much um creating crisis this is one of those crises in um where you become an authority in your own life here but you do have to watch with this energy because it can get now jupiter is great energy it can be fabulous with mars there great yay everything is you know coming up roses but don't overdo it again because you know this is one of those hangovers that'll be hard to get over <laughs> you over to it let's put it that way on february 28th um not the last day of of february because it's a leap year we actually have uh three pretty important things happen they're all conjunctions and they all actually are coming together all three of them uh first we have the sun make uh, a conjunction to mercury uh, we may then we have mercury move on to saturn um and then we have the sun catch up to saturn so we have sun mercury mercury saturn sun saturn all at 10 degrees of pisces um a pilot landing a plane um no that's not it it's not he's not landing the plane let me read it to you i think i would remember it i've only said it a million times it's okay well not a million if it was a million i'd remember an aviator pursues his journey flying through ground obscuring clouds man's ability to develop powers and skills uh skills which by transcending natural limitations allow him to operate in mental and spiritual realms. And the key word here is mastery. This is really about mastering your ability to focus um, on what it is that you want to see in the world. Saturn is in your third house. It's the mind house. So what's on your mind and what do you want to see happen? Focusing on that is important. Um, and although it may not from the outside seem like things are happening, you're utilizing some extra sensory perception. So things are happening that we, that may not quite be, uh, be seen yet, but they're there. They're already happened. You just haven't seen it yet. Excuse me. And then the 29th, which is the last day of February leap year. Uh, Mercury makes a waning sextile to Jupiter. The two sides of your mind are talking to each other and um, moving you in a more integrated, actuated, progressive, and uh, better headspace space. <laughs> All right, and that's that. Okay, let's let's go. Let's stop the share and let's get into the astrology. I mean, no, the tarot. So I did pull. Um, I pulled a crystal ally card, and I got sunstone. I love sunstone. If you've ever had an opportunity to see a piece, it's really beautiful. It really does look like what that sun. That's sunstone sun, right? Um, leadership, which you're good with because you're a Capricorn. All right, Sunstone, uh, let's see. This mineral can be used to both clear and energize the chakras. It can also provide for the brightening of the chakras, allowing one to exhibit a floral freshness and a feeling of being squeaky clean. It assists in gently removing the hookups which have infiltrated the energy centers, returning them to the source after surrounding them with both love and positive energy. So it's a good, it's um it's a good stone to help release you from the attachments that people how people attach to you. 
Um, it can uh, it can be used to dissipate fearfulness, to alleviate stress, and to increase vitality. Uh, it has been used to encourage independence and originality and to provide luck uh, in the game. It has been used by the Canadian Indians in rituals of the medicine wheel to show to the spirit guides that connection with the golden white healing light of the sun. In these ceremonies, sunstone is placed on the center of the medicine wheel, and it has been reported that during contact with spirit guides, the stone has emitted a golden glow. It says in ancient India, it was believed to provide protection from destructive forces of other realms. It says it is quite helpful with chronic sore throats. Um, and has been used to reduce stomach tension and relieve ulcers. Hmm. All right. Well, that's what um, this, I got this from Love in the Earth by Melody. It's a, I've had it for years. It's an oldie, but a goodie. All right. And um, then I also selected a rune. Where's the runes? Oh, dear. Hold on. Uh, rune card, and I picked Lagus, which is this one. Lagus is water. Water. The card I picked. This. You see the baby in the great cosmic sea. Unseen powers are active here, powers that nourish, shape, and connect. The attributes of this rune are water, fluidity, the ebb and flow of emotions, careers, and relationship. Lagus encourages you to immerse yourself in the experience of living without having to evaluate or understand. It speaks to the satisfaction of emotional needs, to the awakening of the intuitive or lunar side of your nature, for while the sun strives for differentiation, the moon draws us towards union and merging. So it's a balance, right? It's a balance of this energy of merging and the energy energy of leadership. All right. I am going to use, I just got, oh, here we go. This deck is called the, um, it was a gift, Sacred Web. Sacred Web Tarot, and I've shuffled it already, and now let's see what, what's coming up for you. All right, so we have, we start with the Ace of Cups, Eight, sorry, Eight of Cups. There's a sense of uh, wistfulness here. Uh, this little bird has a, sort of like a little bit of a cowl over him, so this could be feeling a little bit down, feeling a little bit um blue you're feeling a little bit blue and perhaps turning your back on all the effort you put into a situation let's see the challenge the nine of pentacles the challenge here is to know that you have what you need and you have enough and it's going to be okay so I almost feel like there's a maybe a situation or a job that you're doing that you it's just not as fulfilling as you had hoped. And you're worried that by turning your back on it, it's going to cost you. You're not going to be able to be self-sufficient and self-reliant. Um, underneath it all, we have the eight of um, pentacles here, I believe. And um, we have a goat. We have like a mountain goat here. And so this is about persistence um, and working and being persistent. But there is also the, the eight of pentacles. There's always this sense of having done it over and over and over again. And it can be, um, if you can connect it to something that, brings you joy then 
you it, it feeds it right it feeds the joy and it creates the foundation for the joy but if it's sucking you dry and and you're you're waiting for just to have enough or make enough so you can do what you want then you might want to look at what you're doing right in the past <sighs> The past, we have the past. This is Six of Cups. This is nostalgia. There is some nostalgia going on. Remembering, maybe remembering things from your childhood. In the sky, we have the emperor. This is about becoming an authority. Um, it's about leadership, just like the sunstone. A call to leadership, perhaps. Perhaps you're being called to leadership. Let's see in the immediate future. Um, we have the Four of Wands. This is a lovely card. Community. So there's a community for you. There's um, happiness and celebration. So that's nice. That's happening. That's happening. That card, the immediate future card, is really the card for the month, really, when you think about it. Uh, how you're seen from the outside, um, like um, fertile, fierce, not to be toyed with. Your domestic situation. Um, we have the Seven of Cups. Um, it's <laughs> most of the cups are on their side, and the one cup is up, so that won't come out, but the rest could. Um. This is about choices and difficulty making choices. It could also be um, a little around, about illusion. There might be some illusions that you have uh, concerning either where you live or um, or with somebody that you live with. It's possible somebody that you live with could have a, a could have an issue with alcohol or some other substance, or you might find yourself like drinking one too many glasses of wine after with dinner. Just take notice of that. Take notice of that. Hopes and fears. This is um. Is this the tower or is this healing? Um, temperance, hoping for healing, hoping for healing. Outcome, two of wands. You're right, you're right at the um, precipice. That's what this says. You're not quite stepping over the line yet. See if we can get a major arcana. Um, two of pentacles. So balancing, balancing your finances. And the moon. There's some emotional ups and downs. I feel like there may be somebody that's around you that's having these. I don't know if this is you or if this is somebody in your life dealing with um, maybe some alcohol issues. Let's see what's underneath it. Ah, the world. So this is the end of something and the beginning of something new. That's a Saturn card. The Wheel of Fortune. Change. And the Two of Swords. Um, no, it's not the Two of Swords. I'm sorry. It is the Eight of Swords. 
you're going to have to hold your 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 hold your um, tongue on this. or whatever you say has to be very carefully thought out. Wow. Wow. Two major arcana and the eight of swords. But the eight of swords also indicates that your best bet is using your intuition. So there's a little bit of a mixed bag this, this month. Um, you do need to take the leadership in certain situations, things that know that things that um, are um, draining your energy need to be cut away. You need to keep your eyes open for uh, an issue with uh, drugs or alcohol, whether it's you or somebody in your life. Um, because the universe is saying it's, it's time to get your shit together. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was the universe. That wasn't me. All right, guys. Well, I hope you find this helpful. Like and subscribe if you would. If you know another Capricorn who wants to hear this, you can share it. Um, if you would like a reading with me, I do do readings that are a combination of astrology, numerology, and Kabbalah. Like nothing you've had before, unless you've had one with me. Um, very, very transformational and most people really do enjoy them. Um, it doesn't matter if you know anything about astrology or numerology or Kabbalah, very few people do. Um, these readings are really, um, quite in depth and quite helpful to the individual in search of purpose. Um, I also have some classes starting. I have astrology, beginner's astrology, two options on that. I have a Saturday afternoon class, noon to two Eastern, starting on the 3rd of February for six consecutive uh, Saturdays. Or I have a Monday evening class. That's Monday the 5th of, yep. The 5th of February, 5th, the 5th of February, it's hard to say. Um, yeah, the 5th of February, 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern. Even if you don't, if you can't make all the classes, you do get all the classes after their, uh, after the, the session. So uh, you can um, be part of it without, you know, even if you have some issues with the timing. And I'm also doing a introduction to the Kabbalah that's starting on um, the 18th, uh, Thursday, the 18th of January. So I think this will come out um, by then. So, uh, but I, I've, I've made, I've already made some announcements on that. So, all right. Uh, all the links are below. <laughs> become a patron that would be nice it's helpful helpful i can do more work all right guys take care much love everyone namaste